Welcome to St. Croix. Well, you heard of St. Croix? Yeah. We're going to the island just to the left of it. What's it called? Ted's. Just getting into our anchorage for the night. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. It's a great way to support our channel. And let us know what you think in the comments section. We love hearing from you. Love you guys. Along this journey, we've had the opportunity to visit a lot of forts, and after a bit, they all start to look the same. But Fort Christian Stavron in St. Croix was very different. It's one of the best preserved colonial forts in the Caribbean. It was constructed in 1749 by enslaved Africans and conscripted Danish soldiers. Not only was it a stronghold to provide protection from potential attacks by foreign invaders, it also housed many prisoners, men and women. It was so surreal to be able to go into the cells where the prisoners were kept. The spaces were extremely tiny, I couldn't even stand up, and I'm short people. There was this eerie feeling all around and it was extremely uncomfortable, especially down in the dungeons. I couldn't even imagine what it would have been like filled with people. We only had about a 24 hour window into St. Croix, so it was time to make the most of it and explore the rest of Christiansted. We couldn't get enough of the beautiful buildings and churches. It was fun playing tourists and emerging ourselves in all the little things that this town had to offer. We even found ourselves at a speakeasy. You never know what you'll find behind those secret doors. <laughs> That's freaking fantastic. Oh my God. Nightlife in St. Croix. Okay, this is our last big jump on our way uh, on this trip down to Grenada. So we are in St. Croix today. And Heading to St. Martin. Yeah, we've got a tw about a 20 hour sail to St. Martin. We're just about to pull a banker. We have our sailing attire on. We're <laughs> sailors. We're Team Hanu today. We are Team yeah. Hanu. And the race is on. Let's go. Oh, gorgeous water. I say quoi? So long, sucker. Oh, I can't wait to see what you got. Yeah. Oh, it's a oh, Ah, it's a Cuda. Yeah. It's a big ass Cuda. Uh -huh. All right, let's deal with this. Yeah. 
Hi, buds. Oh, look at those teeth. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Round two. Fish on. <laughs> we saw a billion flying fish just kind of coming at us. So we figured there was something in the area, and sure enough, it is. Fingers crossed, it's not another Cuda. Looks like another Cuda, baby. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> we gotta get a picture of the Cuda before we let him go. The other one. Oh, big guy. Hey, bud. At least it's not in his eye this time. Yeah. pitch black and there's no moon right now too so it's dark dark out the stars were epic last night and uh you can see him approaching and i was watching him on the ais and it looked like he was gonna hit his head on so last minute about four miles five miles apart i decided it was time for us to tack open the camera up because the sail's flapping we were motor sailing at the time so I made a tack and he called me instantly uh, with his European accent, other time, other time, you need to turn back. And I said, oh, sorry, I was trying to tack out of your way. He's like, you will not make it. You need to turn back as, as soon as possible. So I did and he was doing close to 30 knots. Yeah. And he flew by us and had seen us on AS and had flooded his course around us, which is crazy to get in that giant city would do that. Yes. And the crazy thing about that too is when you usually see tankers and cruise ships out of here, it's your job to get out of their way to make sure that, because yeah. they're not moving. They got their line and that's all that's happening. And yep. this guy, he moved to get out of our way. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, so both of us were coming at each other. He started veering this way and then I did. So it was, he's like, you need to do a port to port pass. And I right away, I'm like, holy shit. So we switched back and went the other way. And, and then it was back. really fast when he went past us. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, but it was a great night, great mm -hmm. night. Great but we're night. Uh, almost here. Yes. So here is St. Martin. We can see it in the distance. Land ho, we're about an hour away. Woo! I'm ready. Me too, I'm tired. <laughs> we both got about three and a half hours of sleep last night. Yeah. We're tired. Yeah. But exciting, exciting. Today is Yellow Flag Day. It's a new country. Yellow Flag Day is a super exciting day for us. It means a new adventure is about to begin. We are about to enter a new country. The yellow quarantine or Q flag was flown when ships remained in quarantine once they arrived from distant countries to avoid bringing in contagious diseases. Today, it indicates that a boat is approaching a country and requests the right to enter the waters of the host country. It also shows that you're going to take the steps to complete the entry formalities with customs and immigration. Once these formalities are behind you, you're free to stay without boarding. Now all countries are different. Some don't put much emphasis on flying the queue, while others will pass on a hefty fine if it's not flown before properly clearing. 
Yeah, two, so, two new countries. Well, we'll only do one today and the other another day. I know, but still, but, it's pretty neat. We're yes. going to be on an island that's split in half between the French and the Dutch. So, yeah. very cool. Super cool. So we've got check-in later on today. And then, oh, maybe a nap or something in our future. Oh, then it's time to discover St. Martin. check-in there and a check out if we're coming back this way so I think we're gonna try and leave Hanu here and then just dinghy to the other side yellow flag day new country so exciting Super exciting. okay time to go find customs and get legal in this here country How's this for an experience? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah? I love it. All the music's in French and yeah, it's like being in a whole new world now. <laughs> it really is. And a day later. It's crazy. How fun. Can't wait to walk around here. It looks so neat. No kidding. First, first, first let's get checked in. Yes. You look pretty happy there, mister. Oh, it's nice. building our way here and a very long dinghy ride ahead of us but this is working so yeah it's all good it's all good yeah we're pretty excited to get these things hooked up and start to actually get our batteries back up to help you stay without having to use our generator anymore so look way bigger now that they're on the boat. <laughs> they're huge. Oh, this is exciting. It's very exciting. Okay, let's get to work. Whew. So we've got the old panels removed now. We've just cleaned the surface up to get it prepared for the new panels. And now it's time to start fitting them and getting all the wires connected. And it should be a pretty simple process. 
Having everything already wired, it's going to be a lot quicker just to change the panels out instead of having to chase wires and all that kind of stuff. So it should be a pretty simple install. It's cloudy out, and when we turned it on and checked on, on their Victron controller, we could see these were putting out as much as our 2,000 watt generator when it's running flat out. I'm pumped. I'm so pumped. We should be hitting absorption by midday every day now and have free power to make water and ice, which we want. So, awesome. Good work, babe. Good work, babe. This is so great. And they look good. We were worried that they weren't going to look good on the hard top because it was nice having it sleek, but this is great. So now it's just time to do some make pretty work, put it back together, and this project is done and a definite success. Yeah. Nothing like a good dinghy dog restaurant. And a barking dog. Thank you. 